uh, we're fishing a river system today. Uh, water temp is really starting to get cold. This time of year, the fish really start getting in a feeding pattern, fattened up for the winter. Uh, so anytime you get to places with a lot of bait, uh, a jerk bait is just one of the, by far one of the best ways of putting a big limit of fish in the boat for you. And not just big ones, but a lot of times just a lot of fish, period. And I think we all like catching fish, and I know I do. Ooh, that grass felt good. Woo so that's what we're doing today. We are going to be fishing jerk baits, clear water, current, trying to catch us some big smallmouth, largemouth, anything we can catch. Carp, bluegill, I don't care. But well, hopefully some big small mouth and large mouth today will be our target. And there's some pretty looking water here. Now we just gotta see what these fish are gonna do. I don't care what lake you go to, river you go to, there's always more than one pattern going on. Yeah, we're fishing for jerk baits right now. That's, you know, I like to be a shallow water power fisherman. But for you worm draggers out there, there's, uh, there's always a bite for you guys too. If you like to fish slow, you want to drag a tube, Carolina rig, or even fish a jig, uh, there's always going to be that good bite going on in the fall too. Um, and some days it'll change. Some days the, the worm fish, <coughs> there he is. <coughs> oh. Hold that thought, Reese. Um, Sometimes the, the power bait fishermen will get the bigger limit. And sometimes the, uh, hey. And sometimes the warm fishermen will get them, but. All right, now we're getting a little bit bigger. He's not big, but we're getting bigger fish by fish, so. Thank you, buddy. When fishing a jerk bait, you wanna you know, definitely change your retrieve up until uh, you find out the right bite. And, you know, a lot of people fish jerk baits a certain way, but there's, there's a lot of different ways and retrieves you, want, you can do. But um, typically I'll start out fishing just a real fast erratic pattern like so. Just making that bait just real fast, dart side to side, uh, not giving a lot of pause, trying to make the bait really chase, or make the fish really chase the bait. Just jerk, jerk. Dirt, 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 dirt. Um, and when the fish are real aggressive, chasing a lot of bait, that works fine. You can cover a lot more water uh, in a short amount of time. But when the fish are less aggressive, you know, whether it's after a cold front, water might be, you know, cold, or post front, anything might uh, cause the fish to really slow down. A lot of times you can slow that bait down. They'll go jerk, jerk and just give a long pause. I mean, it might be two seconds, might be 30 seconds. Let that bait pause and jerk, 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 pause. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of river or lake system you go to, there's always gonna be either man-made currents or natural currents. Uh, but current really is a, a key factor in finding feeding and active fish. Uh, on lakes that, are, that they pull water through the dams, uh, when they start pulling that water, current starts coming through, it starts moving and, and positioning the bait fish, which in turn uh, positions the bass. So uh, current a lot of times is a key factor and a, and a huge asset to catching a lot of fish. Just make sure you look for ambush points for these fish to uh, relate to some type of cover that makes sense for the current coming by it. Uh, those, those are going to be your key, key, key spots to look at for catching current fish. When it comes to wind, wind is probably one of the biggest determining factors on how a bass is going to feed that day. Uh, it, whether it, probably where it comes into most play is when you're fishing clear water situations, uh, meaning say three foot to twenty foot visibility type of reservoirs or river systems. Uh, just for the fact that uh, it pushes the wind is going to push bait into a pocket if you have it. Uh, it also breaks up light penetration. Uh, so the fish don't feel as spooky. Uh, they'll actually come up shallower. Uh, where if you have where if you have no wind whatsoever, uh, it's just slick, calm, light penetration goes deep. Fish are going to push down deep. So use wind to your advantage. Uh, most people try to hide from the wind a lot of times a year, uh, but I would say from uh, 
post-spawn all the way through into the fall, your windy shorelines are going to be some of your best fishing you can possibly find. Uh, so use wind to your advantage because it moves the bait, uh, breaks up light penetration, and tends to make fish more aggressive uh, and, much, and, and be able to fish a lot shallower. Oh yeah, we, here we go. Oh. Oh yeah, baby. That's a good fish. He got it right on your noggin, dude. Ooh, nice large knob. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Pointer Minnow. Pointer 100, Chartreuse Shad. Got us a nice pretty bass first thing in the morning. Get you some of that. He ain't the prettiest one. <laughs> but he's a good one, that's all I know. Why can't I always catch these in tournament? <laughs> oh yeah. A lot of times when I'm fishing a jerk bait, I like to fish on a fiberglass rod like I got here. The reason being is uh, when you're jerking a bait, any type of reaction bait, it's no different than a crank bait, lipless crank bait, um, especially a rip bait. So a lot of times you're jerking that bait pretty hard and the fish comes up and grabs the back end of that bait or just barely gets one of those hooks as he strikes that bait and you go to jerk it you're gonna wind up ripping the hook right out of that fish. So with the fiberglass rod, kind of acts as your uh, big rubber band shock absorber so that when you do first get that initial pull on the bait, you don't rip the hooks right out of the fish. Um, and you, you'll wind up, you'll realize once you, you swap over how many more fish you'll actually land on a fiberglass rod versus a graphite rod. That is coming. You fight a little harder when you when you got jerk bait stuck in your gut. Man, what I've given to have all these fish in a nice turtle. Nice pretty two-pound largemouth. Ooh! <laughs> Thank you. Another one bites the pointer. <laughs> Seems so easy. Just throw a pointer minnow out there. Jerk, 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 stop. Jerk, jerk, jerk. Catch one. That's all you gotta do. It's not hard, ladies and gentlemen. When they want it, they come and get it. That's uh, see how that fish hooked underneath those pectoral fins there. A lot of times, uh, when you're throwing a jerk bait, you will foul hook a lot of fish. The reason is because they come up to get that bait, and all of a sudden you jerk and it turns the opposite direction. And they gotta, you know, whether they gotta calculate the turn or whatever, but you wind up hooking a lot of fish in the back of the head, side of the head, underneath. Um, and that's another reason, you know, for uh, wanting to use a softer action rod. Because uh, a lot of times, if you just you wind up hooking a fish in the outside of the mouth on the other part of the body, stiff a rod, you're gonna rip those hooks out and miss a lot of those fish. So softer rod definitely helps you uh, put more of those fish in the boat. 